Amber and Hannah and Sydney. You said Sydney's <laughs> roughly nine. DNA female? Oh, uh, now she's laid to multiple eggs. <laughs> so we're still not sure. <laughs>
But one of the bigger parts of the reward was like, oh, I'm back on the tea stand, <laughs> right? So recognizing that if you picked her up and were like, yes, it worked. And you like went off and celebrated, we're missing half of the other, the other half of the reinforcement going back to the perch because that's what she seems to want currently. So what we could do is work on getting a step up for a treat. And then the next time have her step up, wait a half second, then get the treat wait a half second and go back to the perch and the next one she steps up wait a half second get a treat and then wait two seconds before you put her back to the perch we're slowly extending the amount of time that she's on you but not in a jarring way we're taking those small approximations and that'll start to help her become more okay with being on you for a longer period of time in this environment this exact picture i'm seeing it might be different at home but just as a general observation michelle has just had a huge breakthrough with hermica earlier today and uh, a couple of things that are worth noting when you're working with a bird that you're terrified of. Because <laughs> two days ago, she was terrified of this exact scenario with her own bird. Mm -hmm. And here I put her on the spot in front of people, in front of <laughs> two million people that view this video on YouTube. <laughs> and, and had her demo with a bird that is more, uh, like more terrifying than her own, right? So, a couple of key things is we bring Sydney to the point where she cannot come any closer. She already knows the target. I'm making her reach for the stick and I'm slowly getting to her boom, upper mandible and tongue and then watch this for the treat. There's no way she can bite me with that upper mandible and tongue, right? I got just far enough, just close enough that she can get the treat. I did it in a relatively predictable pacing so I'm not like making her wait and getting her frustrated but it was physically impossible for that lower mandible to bite me. It's that lower part you want to watch out for. So there's this invisible line that I see that I think she can stretch to. It's probably right, you know, I don't want to get too close, but it's a little closer to my hand here. So I'm going to go to that point. She can't quite reach it. I'm going to go a little closer and meet her there. And here, same thing, and meet her there. What it isn't is, here, go ahead and grab the clicker. Okay, will you just grab the clicker? Right? It's not that. So if I'm asking for a target yeah. and I push too far and I know she can crunch it, I'm not pulling back. Okay. Right? I'm coming to where I think I'm going to be there, and then I'm meeting her. Okay. okay. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so come on over. We're going to get to just about where we think she can reach and pause. Okay. As she's reaching, slowly meet her so just the upper mandible touches. The reason it's important with the stick is because we want to put a calm, soft target on cue. If you get any more of these bite marks, you're messing up. Okay? There should be no biting possible. Okay. So whenever you're ready, go ahead. Slowly, slowly, perfect. Now same okay. with this. Yep. Slowly, slowly, pause, slow, slow, yep. Awesome. See how it was impossible for you to get bitten? Yeah. Uh, but you didn't take so much time to deliver the treat that, that she's she going to get upset? Yeah. She's just like right at the edge of the perch. She can't come any closer. It's impossible for you to be bitten. Oh. And we're pairing calm with something that she associates positively with you of receiving a treat and, and having an opportunity to earn that treat. Right? So in the wild, these birds spend all day flying around expending physical uh -huh. energy, foraging, expending mental energy with the hopes of maybe finding food but no guarantee. So in captivity, we want to take that 12-hour cycle where they were sleeping and they couldn't eat, and then right before breakfast, we offer opportunities for them to work for food like they would in the wild, and we're pairing that with a calm emotion and a behavior that's growing your relationship. And so if anybody steps in and does this behavior, it's going to help associate the people that have the target stick that know how to do it can speak the same language of training and you start to build more trust between you and the bird and multiple people in the bird and you put her into a training mode and like in the last class we did this with everybody in the class and then we were actually able to do step up and get three of us three of us four of us mm -hmm. to pick yeah. up the bird mm -hmm. and it was a bird that only one person had been able to pick up before mm -hmm. so you once you put the bird in a training mode it gives you the ability to have this trust and communication that wasn't there before slow slow yeah perfect and yep, yeah, a little further, a little pause there. Excellent. And you can have a seat. That makes sense. It looks yeah, good. Yeah, thank you. If you have people coming over and you want to work through a quick exercise, you can do this while she's in the cage. Because the cage can serve the same way. When there's bars, her beak can only come so far. And I would encourage you to show what it should look like and then explain what it shouldn't look like as well so that there's a really clear picture going into it. Because the older birds are, the less tolerance they have for our mistakes. If they're a baby, you can mess up all day long, it's no problem. But if you picture they lose 1% tolerance every day, after 100 days, you better be spot on. 
So especially at this age, we want to make sure that our communication is really clear with, with the signals of the training, with everything we do, we need to be really spot on and precise. Hi. <laughs> um, yes. I learned to be a far enough away where I cannot get hurt when I train with my sister's bird. And also my sister's energy is what makes the bird extra. <laughs> just extra. Just be scared of the bird because she gets all crazy with me. But if I'm far enough away where she can still touch it and I can't get bit, it won't be so scary. Mm. <laughs> Sydney and I have a good time. <laughs> <laughs> Two peas in a pod, but that's okay. I guess I can set back a little bit. <laughs> it's just so much fun when all the energy goes up. But I get it. I will come. <laughs> How's that going for you? I'm a loud person. My house is busy. I got seven animals, including her. <laughs> You're already excited by this. <laughs> but I will calm down, especially during training sessions, and then I will definitely work on our sleeping schedule because. The last thing I want is another hospital trip.